Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Goodcast, a podcast produced by Goodwill Industries of Fort Worth, where we take a closer look at the story behind the store and highlight successes that have been made possible thanks to the generous donations of everyday people. I am your host, Justin Martinez, and today we'll be answering the question What is a nonprofit? How do they work? How do they impact the community at large? And more specifically, where does Goodwill Fort Worth fit into this system? With me today is David Cox, President and CEO of Goodwill Industries of Fort Worth, who was generous enough to spend some time with us and answer a few questions. Hi, Justin. It's a pleasure to be here with you today visiting about Goodwill. I am super excited to get started. So first things first, in the broadest sense possible, what is a nonprofit? Well, a nonprofit is a business that exists in order to help the community. It's not about making a profit for the shareholders or the owner. It's about um, taking whatever we have and then reinvesting it into the community. So um, it's really to benefit a social cause or, or to provide some type of, of a public benefit. Um, and as such, we're, we're tax exempt, so we don't have to pay taxes on, on the monies we raise because we are reinvesting those into the community. And I think people are definitely more familiar when you're talking about nonprofits like charity specifically, but there are a ton of different organizations that be, that can be classified. Uh, what are some examples that you can think of? You name it. Uh, there's churches, there's hospitals, um, public and state schools, charities. Uh, there's all different types of organizations that exist as nonprofits. We'll get more into this in a second, but Goodwill technically isn't a charity. It's kind of like how all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Most, if not all, charities are nonprofits, but not all nonprofits are charities. If you've had to go to the hospital for a checkup or gone to a state university and are drowning in student debt like me, you probably have an idea of what I'm talking about. One really good example of a charity would be the Ronald McDonald House. Their mission aims to directly impact the life of a child, but they also award grants to other nonprofits to seek more long term solutions for healthcare innovation. So now that we have sort of a clearer definition uh, about nonprofits and, and what they are, let's talk a little bit about Goodwill specifically. Sure. Well, most people know about the Goodwill store or about um, donations. You know, they'll drop their toaster off at Goodwill and um, just think, oh, maybe it's going to a good cause. But they don't really know the real story about Goodwill. Goodwill was established in 1902 in Boston by a Methodist minister named Edgar Helms. And he noticed that people were lined up outside of his church uh, needing handouts. They needed clothing. They needed food. And he would help them. And then he realized um, week after week, these same faces were showing up needing help. So he was uh, very entrepreneurial and um, really ahead of his time. And he started the social enterprise that has grown into what today we call Goodwill. He opened a store and he hired these individuals to repair things that had been donated from the generosity of the community. They sold these items that paid their wages and then they could uh, feed their families and help themselves. You know, you've heard uh, you can teach a man to fish and Mm -hmm. it it serves him a lot better than just giving him a fish. Well, that's really what Edgar Helms was all about. So Goodwill came to Fort Worth in 1949. We were the 100th Goodwill organization in the United States. We have since grown. We have 25 retail stores as well as a high-end boutique up in Keller. 71% of Goodwill's funding here in Fort Worth comes from those retail stores. Then the rest comes from contracts that we do in the community, grants, and some other forms of income. We're going to cover retail and sustainable fashion and all that good stuff in a later episode. So for now, let's focus on the organization as a whole. One important thing to note for the purposes of this podcast and conversation in general is that every Goodwill organization operates independently. So Goodwill Fort Worth operates differently than Goodwill Dallas, which operates differently than Goodwill Hawaii. Yes, that's a real thing. There's no overarching CEO, no Emperor Goodwill, and most importantly, no Mark Curran. You wouldn't believe how many times a week I get asked about this dude that just doesn't exist. But dealing with internet hoaxes is all a part of the job anyways. All that to say, the programs each Goodwill offers can be a little different depending on where you are, but they do have one thing in common. There are currently 161 Goodwill organizations across the country and and actually the world. Um, We are locally run, and each Goodwill has its own board of directors, which are a volunteer group of people from the community. We all have one thing in common is that we we serve people, uh, traditionally people with disabilities, but, but really now 
people with barriers to employment. So if somebody's having a hard time finding employment or, or helping themselves, uh, Goodwill is there to help them. What we offer here in Fort Worth is, is truly tailored to the needs of our community. The, the job needs of people in Chicago are going to be different than the job needs of people here in Fort Worth. So that's really the benefit of, of the way that Goodwill is structured, is we can truly serve our individual communities. Do you know off the top of your head how much of every dollar made its tours goes back to fund these programs? So yes, here in Fort Worth, uh, 90 cents of every dollar that we raise through our retail program and our other business ventures goes right back into our mission of serving people in our community, uh, which is actually a, it, it's a very high um, percentage. And we're very proud of that because we run a very um, streamlined and efficient operation. Mm-hmm. I did a little bit of research beforehand just to uh, get a feel of how other nonprofits worked and how, how they were structured. Um, 90 cents is definitely higher than some of those other organizations. So what is what is the thought process? You know, how do you decide how much uh, goes back towards your programs? Well, my philosophy and the philosophy of Goodwill for Worth is, is we put as much possible back into the community as, as we can. That's the whole reason that we exist is to help people. So the more efficient we can run, the larger we can grow our retail program, the more we can reinvest in the lives of, of the people that we serve. David's being a little humble, so let's break it down further. In 2018, Goodwill Fort Worth was ranked third largest nonprofit in Tarrant County by Fort Worth Business Press based on their investment in the community. One interesting thing to note is that there's no set standard or government regulation as to how much of a nonprofit or charity's budget should be put towards its programs versus its overhead, even on a legal basis. But the general consensus is that it should be at least 65%. I have a quote here from Charity Navigator. Charities exist to provide programs and services. They fulfill the expectations of givers when they allocate most of their budgets toward their charitable missions. Charities that constantly underspend on their programs and services do not have as strong an impact on their charitable missions. Every few years, we do a community needs assessment to see what does the community need from Goodwill. And then we tailor our future programs and services around that community needs assessment. So if we see that the job market for truck drivers is is just going crazy and and there's this huge need for truck drivers, we're going to open a program to train people how to be a truck driver uh, because we know that we can place uh, people with disabilities or people that have been homeless or people that have recently reentered from from a criminal background. We know that we're going to be able to find good jobs for them, good high paying jobs. And that's what we're all about. So how do you, going off of that, how do you conduct these assessments? Is it on the ground just talking to people? Do you fill out surveys? Like what, what kind of information do you get? We start by talking to a lot of our partner agencies that we, that we partner with in the community, a lot of other nonprofits, a lot of agencies that are helping people just like us. You know, we talk to our board. We, we do surveys in the community. Uh, we look at data from, from the city, from the county. We, we look at all types of different things when we're, when we're putting together our plan of what we're going to be doing in the future. And uh, we mentioned that 71% of the uh, revenue from stores goes into programs, but there are definitely other ways to secure funds for that. Uh, one of those ways is grants and uh, other fundraising opportunities. So how does that fit into the process of a nonprofit? So Goodwill is, unlike a lot of other nonprofit organizations, we're very blessed that we have our donated goods retail program, uh, which brings in a revenue because it allows us to self-fund a lot of programs that we do. If they become very popular, if they really work well, then we're able to leverage that and receive grants from foundations or grants from the government to help us make uh, those dollars go further. A really good example of this is our Goodwill Works program, which is our services for the homeless. This started several years ago, and I get to pat myself on the back every once in a while because I I was down um, with my church. We were feeding the homeless uh, in Fort Worth, and I had my daughter with me. She was probably about um, 11 or 12 at the time, and she looked up at me and she said, Dad, um, what does Goodwill do to help these people who are homeless? And I really couldn't honestly answer her that we were doing a lot. I mean, we, we definitely serve people who are homeless at the time, but we weren't doing anything to, to really have a coordinated outreach uh, for the homeless population. So I started visiting with some of the executive directors at Union Gospel Mission, Presbyterian Night Shelter, and I was asking them, you know, um, who's doing your job placement for, for the people who are um, living in your shelters? They needed the help of Goodwill. So 
we self-funded one person. We, we hired them with the, the proceeds generated off of our retail stores. That person went to the shelters, uh, spent a couple days at the shelter, a couple days at another shelter, helping people find jobs. That program was so successful that we were then able to go out and apply for grants to help us grow that program. Today, we have 18 people working in that program. Since its inception, we've served 4,500 people with uh, job training, and these are people who are experiencing homelessness, and we've been able to put 1,900 of them to work, which is incredible. And that's just a great example of how we can start off something really small, self-funded through our retail stores, and then leverage that success uh, to get grants and, and other support to grow those programs. My favorite part of that is the direct action. You know, you're going and talking not only to the people that are experiencing homelessness, but the organizations that are helping them in addition to that uh, research, those numbers. So nothing really feels like a gamble when you're launching these programs. Exactly. A lot of that just comes from our experience in the community. We've been serving this community for um, many, many years. And we, we have a lot of great partnerships in the community. We work well with a lot of other organizations. And that's what it's all about. You know, we all have the same goal, which is to help people. So um, we've really seen a lot of success through those kinds of partnerships. So we've talked a little bit with Goodwill Works and how you collaborate with other organizations, but there are certainly other programs that do kind of the same thing. Um, a lot of business development, a lot of like meeting people, shaking hands. Uh, what are what are some other ways that um, nonprofits in the area can interact with each other to support their communities? Yeah, we've been very fortunate to be able to partner with um, a number of agencies and other nonprofits in our area. Our workforce development staff has helped to host many resource fairs and job fairs for people coming out of incarceration. Uh, we've partnered with fine agencies like Catholic Charities and Trinity Metro, finding transportation for our clients so that they can get to work. We work with the Moncrief Cancer Institute and with Texas Health Resources, and we provide uh, free health screenings at our stores to those agencies. The possibilities are really endless when it comes to, to collaboration, and the good thing is it really benefits our community. Mm -hmm. We've talked course about like going out in the community, but there are still larger ways that uh, nonprofits and Goodwill can help out. Um, tell me a little bit about these advocacy trips that y'all take to both Austin, the capital of Texas, and uh, to Washington. Sure. So every year I get to take a couple staff members and myself, we go to Washington, D.C., and we have meetings set all day long with our elected officials. And we talk to them about uh, goodwill, about the people we serve. And the, the purpose of this is to try to affect um, changes to laws that will in turn uh, make it easier for us to do our job. So make it easier for us to, to place people into an employment. You'd be amazed at the number of laws that come down every year that affect marginalized populations and, and the people that goodwill serve. So uh, that's what it's all about, is, is about educating them and, and trying to, to get laws that will help us do our job better. Another important thing to know when we're talking about nonprofits and advocacy. Nonprofits in general aren't allowed to take definitive political stances like endorsing candidates, but they can advocate for particular laws and causes in line with their mission. Nonprofits have to be very careful in maintaining their nonpartisan status. We do the same thing in Austin every two years when the legislature meets. So it's just a good opportunity to, to visit and to tell the goodwill story and, and try to affect change on that level. So obviously Goodwill does a lot of really good work. And that, that sort of idea and uh, I don't know if I want to call it sentimentality is definitely present in the staff as well. You know, you have people who've been here for 10, 15, 20 plus years. Why do you think that people are so devoted to Goodwill's mission? So if you've seen the Goodwill logo, it's, it's a smiling face. It's actually a G, but it looks like a smiling face and it's on a blue background, Goodwill Blue. And if you've been around Goodwill long enough, we, we say that you bleed blue because the mission of Goodwill gets in your blood. And um, I've seen this time and time again, when people come to Goodwill, they don't want to leave because not only are you challenged through having a, a job that's in business, you know, because we do operate a, a very large $50 million a year business, but you get to go home knowing that you didn't just impact the bottom line, but you impacted the lives of people. And that makes all the difference. It, it makes your work worthwhile. And you recently received your 15 year? 20 year. 20 year. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So how did you get on board with, with Goodwill? 
So that's a, a funny story. I, I came to Goodwill thinking I was going to be here maybe five years. You know, is this mm-hmm. going to be uh, something to put on my resume? Right out of college, I went to work for the Boy Scouts. Then I worked for a church. So I've only worked nonprofits my entire career. When when I applied for Goodwill, I answered an, an ad. This will tell you how long ago it's been. It was an ad in the newspaper. Mm-hmm. And it just said, local nonprofit seeks a marketing director. And I said, oh, okay. I want, you know, my, my degree was in public relations marketing. So then when Goodwill called, I said, oh, I don't remember applying for Goodwill. And she said, oh, yeah, you, you did. Trust me. So she gave me the address and I showed her for the interview. And it was this really terrifying building over on East Lancaster. Really, really bad building. So she told me on the phone, when you see the building, don't turn around and leave. Mm-hmm. Please come in. Well, I, I trusted her. I went in and the rest is really history. I started as a marketing director. After a few years, um, I was promoted to vice president of retail. So I oversaw all the retail stores and donated goods process for Goodwill Fort Worth. And then from there, um, became CEO in 2013. So I can't imagine working anywhere else. I hope that I'm able to work here the rest of my career and retire from Goodwill Industries of Fort Worth, just because it's such a it's such a great place to work, but it's, it's just a great cause. You know, we really get to impact the community. If you're ever having a bad day at work, uh, you can go into our STARS program, which is our program for people with uh, significant disabilities. They, they come, they hug on you, they love on you, and really just drive home the reason why we do what we do. We have a beautiful facility here in South Fort Worth. We're actually getting to expand it here in the near future. Um, we're busting at the seams, and we've launched a, a $12 million capital campaign to, to add 45,000 square feet to this facility which will help us serve more people than ever before. In the next 10 years, we're projecting to double the number of people that we serve here in Fort Worth. So we're looking at serving 16,000 people a year. Uh, That's a lot of lives touched through the power of work. And you kind of touched on it a little bit. You sort of hopped around various departments within Goodwill. So I'm sure you've had a very direct hand in some of those changes. Um, But as CEO, I'm sure a lot of people are curious, you know, like, what does your day to day look like now? Well, a a Goodwill CEO um, has to kind of be a jack of all trades. You know, um, we have, of course, our donated goods retail program, which is what most people know. Uh, We have our workforce development, which we've spoken a little bit about today, where we serve, um, you know, people who are experiencing homelessness, people with disabilities, our veterans. We we have a big youth program. There's all these different populations that we serve. Then Goodwill also has a contracts division. We do janitorial and grounds maintenance work for the federal government and for for the state and city. We have a temporary agency. So, you know, we have all these different business lines that a lot of people don't realize Goodwill does. So a lot of my job is 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 a balancing act. You know, it's mm-hmm. we have all these different businesses and, and somebody has to coordinate that. So that's what I do. And then a, another part of it is, of course, education, you know, not only educating the community, but but also talking with employees, um, making sure that our mission is being communicated effectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're definitely not just like going to the golf course every day. No, no, I, I never get to go to the golf course <laughs> unless it's for the Goodwill Golf Tournament, which we do every year. Of course, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm out there one day a year, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. That's so, and, and I can I can attest that like I have seen you at plenty of uh, our live events, you know, or you're always in, in meetings with various department heads or um, monthly uh, board meetings, stuff like that. With so monthly you're... board meetings, monthly leadership meetings. Yeah. So, so you're very you're very involved. And I think that is sort of uh, not what people would assume when they think of CEOs in general. But even on, on a personal level, you know, I, I think. I've enjoyed working with you because I see that, you know, pretty much everybody's name here, you know, you are very personable. And I think that that goes a long way to our programs and sort of the attitude of goodwill. Well, I appreciate that. We call it a goodwill family. We really are a family. Um, We spend uh, as much time with with our goodwill family as we do with our family at home. So I think it's important for us to to foster an environment here that that is family like, and, and we serve people from all walks of life. We are a very very diverse workforce here at Goodwill, and that's something that I take great pride in because a diverse workforce is a healthy workforce, mm-hmm. and it it adds spice. You know, it adds interest to to the daily grind. You know, you're not just coming in because you're you're experiencing um, and interacting with people from every walk of life. Mm-hmm. So that's always been um, one of the highlights for me of, of being in this position. Well, and that's another thing, right? It's like you talk about diversity and inclusion, and a lot of our leadership are people who have managerial positions, like they have gone through the programs themselves. So they yes. they have that experience in it. It makes connecting with potential clients or uh, providing those services easier 
they can give back a little bit of what's been given to them. Goodwill typically hires the hardest to serve population. So, you know, a lot of times people just need a second chance. People have been in prison um, for drugs, you know, and that's many, many years in their past. And they've changed over the course of being in prison. And they just need somebody to give them a chance. And Goodwill has given thousands of, of individuals like this a chance. People with disabilities, you know, that are often overlooked by other employers. Goodwill hires them. So, yeah, you're definitely right. Um, That's one thing that leads to them bleeding blue and to having this passion for what they do is um, they've been helped out and now they get to help out. And we see people um, promoted from within all the time uh, in leadership positions in in our company that started off as a client. And we'll we'll for sure, uh, through the course of this podcast, get more into our various departments and Mm -hmm. the success stories that have come uh, from that. But is there anything just in this this introductory episode that... uh, you want people to know about Goodwill? You know, what is the one thing that, that you wish people saw? So the, the most frustrating thing for me is the misunderstanding about what Goodwill does and who we are. A lot of people think that we are a for-profit company. Google's not owned by anyone. We're a nonprofit. We're owned by the community. So, you know, yeah, we have paid staff that work here. They work very hard. Uh, you want that in a nonprofit. You want nonprofits to hire the best people possible so that they can grow and be as effective and, and serve as many people in the community as possible. So that's the main thing I want people to know about Goodwill is, you know, we're a hundred year old, well-respected charity that that really helps a lot of people. What is next for Goodwill Fort Worth in the next five, 10 years? Well, our board is undergoing a 10-year long-range strategic planning process right now, um, which is exciting because we get to to try to predict the future, which <laughs> really you write it in pencil and you, you carry a big eraser because you really never know what the future is going to hold. But you, you try to be forward thinking and you try to create programs that are going to serve the community of Fort Worth in 10 years. You know, what's it going to look like? It's going to be quite a bit different. So our, our board is very engaged in that process, and, and that's exciting. So like I said earlier in the podcast, we're, we're going to double the number of people served. That's, that's their big focus. They're, they're not focused on revenue growth as a priority. They're focused on people growth and then revenue growth in order to support that. So it, it's a really cool way of looking at that. Um, We talked about the new building, the expansion that we're doing here at our our Campus Drive uh, headquarters. That's going to be huge when it comes to how many people we're able to serve. We'll, of course, continue to to grow our donated goods and retail program. Thrift shopping is is very trendy. We're we're not necessarily following the the downturn that you're seeing in in a lot of traditional retail because thrifting is becoming very popular and and people like to to come in and create their own looks that are unique and and recycling and and being sustainable is very popular right now as well. So Goodwill is, is the ultimate recycler. We were recycling before anyone else was, you know, uh-huh. yeah. and not just stuff, but but people's lives. So you know, we we, we were green before green was cool. Uh-huh. And I think that will that will definitely continue as a trend. Uh, just the future is is very green when it comes to retail. That's and, right. That's right. <laughs> well, that's all super exciting. I know I can't wait to see these changes happen, uh, both like as someone who works for Goodwill and as a member of the community. Right. So thank you for hanging out with us today. Thank you for. Uh, for being on this pilot episode. It's well, been really cool. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And that is going to do it for us here today. Thank you all so much for listening to Goodcast, the Goodwill Fort Worth podcast. We're still getting our footing for this show, but I hope you enjoyed it. In future episodes, we're going to explore the various programs within Goodwill Fort Worth and highlight success stories and interviews just like this. Be sure to check out all of our social media for updates and news, all that good stuff to search Goodwill Fort Worth and let us know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. We're going to end this one with a quote from Goodwill's founder, the Reverend Edgar J. Helms. Friends of Goodwill, be dissatisfied with your work until every person in your community has an opportunity to develop to their fullest usefulness and enjoy a maximum of abundant living.